Hey, good morning, my name is Whitney Carmen. I'm the Grayson County Agriculture and Natural Resources Agent and today I have with me Evan Tate. Yep, and I'm the uh, Ag Agent in Hancock County. And, and we're actually going to do a demonstration today and talk to you all about how we want to um, describe DNA sampling and the importance of it in beef cattle and, and where the industry is going with that. Yep, and so uh, as of today we've got three different types of samples that we can take. Uh, and it kind of depends on the lab that you're working with and, and your goals and aspirations as to what you're doing. And so some of these samples probably differ a little bit from those in the purebred sector versus those in the commercial sector. Mm -hmm. All right, so Evan, what do we have here today as far as what we're going to need? That's probably the first thing that uh, we want to describe to everybody about what different options you have and what tools we need to start off with. Sure. So for there's a couple of different types of samples like we talked about. For our hair samples, they're really, uh, it's really pretty simple. Mm -hmm. um, we call the lab that we're asking uh, to do our DNA work and they will ship us out hair cards. And basically this is a two-ply collector. It has a sticky side in it uh, to, where we, uh, to where we put our hair follicles. We'll need just a simple pair of needle nose pliers would be my preference. Any pliers would work, but needle nose seem to work better. Um, with any of this, the main goal is to get a clean sample uh, and a good sample. And so, you know, some type of cleaning agent like alcohol uh, that we can clean between cattle uh, if we get manure or debris in our pliers. Um, what I like, I always like to wear some type of uh, nitrile glove uh, so that we don't contaminate those samples as we're doing so. All right, and is there other options that we have if we don't want to do the hair test? What other options do we have? Yeah, and so the hair test is the easiest uh, in my mind to collect. However, uh, it gets a little bit tedious in the fact that the samples, we have a higher rate of failure for samples in the lab with a hair test. And so it takes somewhere between 30 and 60 hair follicles and making sure that we get the root of the hair in the sample. Um, to get a to get a good quantity for our lab, but the failure rate is much much higher there, and so we're paying for a little bit inconvenience uh, when we're talking about that. The most uh, used one thus far would be a blood card, where we actually take a sample of blood uh, out of the cow, and like this is a different stuff. collector, and it kind of has a target on it. And so our goal would be to fill that target up with a, blood, with a few drops of blood. And it only takes a couple, one or two or three at the most. Okay. Um, do you have some examples yeah, here? Yeah, so we've got some examples of the right way and the wrong way to do it. And so this one here would be the right way. So we've basically filled our target up, but we haven't flooded the card. And so uh, a lot of people uh, will flood their card thinking that they're getting the most possible blood on the card, but what actually that does, uh, it gives more of an opportunity for mold and mildew to take hold and ruin the sample before it actually gets to the lab. So we'll demonstrate some of that here shortly. All right. Well, what's the last, I know there's another uh, option that you can do as far as the DNA testing, and what do we have uh, today that we're going to demonstrate on that? Cool. So. Uh, the last option, and, and is quickly becoming the most popular, I think it's the easiest, and I think we get the best sample out of it, is a sample called a TSU. And a TSU, it takes this little collector and our gun, and it essentially takes a tissue sample from the ear of the cow. It is clean, it's easy, uh, all these are barcoded so that they're easily, uh, easily identified per cow, uh, but a really nice way to do it. It is slightly more expensive right now, but as technology progresses, I would suspect that it probably does get cheaper I was over say, time. The more people that do it, well, the more you likely bet. it is going to get you cheaper. Bet. And I see we have a lot of stuff here, and I'm here today to help you. And so this looks like it could be a little tedious, but you know, you're here today to ex kind of explain how to do that. And how much help do you think you're going to need when you're working with these animals and doing these blood tests? So there's nothing here that we couldn't do with one person. But with that said, an extra set of hands certainly helps in getting samples clean, it helps them getting correct. Uh, the record keeping that we send alongside these samples to the lab is imperative to get the right DNA back on the right particular cow. And so uh, for me, uh, I like to have somebody with me uh, 
wearing nitrite gloves mm -hmm. just like we talked about doing things clean with good handwriting would be would be the preference but nonetheless someone that can fill out uh, those sample cards as we take those samples and, and move forward uh, so an extra set of hands is certainly needed okay and so you've obviously done a whole lot of these samples and um, do you have any kind of tips or anything to make things a little easier for producers out there that might be getting started with this yeah um, so just in time savings alone uh, and for me keeping things straight if I'm doing it by myself I like to go ahead and fill out all the information needed on all the cards before I get there and so it's asking for my name mm -hmm. for the animals ID would that be their tag number registration number if you're dealing with a breed association uh, and then the date the sample is taken uh, and then I can go ahead and fill out the corresponding information on our lab sheets as well and so that takes a lot of it out a lot of time away from the shoot and also gives me a way to double check those samples to the tag number to make sure that I have the right tag number uh, for the right sample and so I really like to do it that way. I was going to say I see we have record keeping here and I would assume as in anything when in cattle production and record keeping is important and so keeping that in line with what you're doing so having that extra help there probably will help with that. But, uh, so and also you know can you talk a little bit about how we a lot of seeds, seed stock producers are doing this, but what about our commercial producers? Is this something that would benefit them? So this is a technology that's coming uh, quite fast. Uh, the, the progress is always exponential in technology like this. Uh, eight or ten years ago, uh, the, uh, the profiles that we would have got back didn't have much value. Today that's not the case. Uh, there's programs out there now that we can take a uh, DNA sample on a commercial cow do our best to describe her breed composition and we'll get back anywhere to up to 16 data points on that particular cow. And so essentially we get a full EPD suite on a commercial cow that, that we didn't know anything about. Uh, and also if we've got a producer that's running multiple bulls in a herd and he's trying to figure out which, which bull sired those heifers, we can do parent verification mm -hmm. now on those commercial cows with that. So that's a really interesting topic and I think that that's one that might um, help commercial producers as well uh, increase their value on their farm. Yeah, you bet. It's, it's one of those things I think as we go forward uh, we'll have marketplaces that, that require this. I think it makes us viable in the market uh, to better understand which DNA markers we have in mm -hmm. our cattle. Uh, and the variation that we find within the cow herd is, is quite astounding a lot of the time. And so, so if we can identify those individuals to keep back in the herd that have those DNA markers associated with profitability, uh, I think it's a wise investment. Okay, so we've talked about all the process and the benefits of it. How long does it take to typically get something back like this, our results? So, and what are you going to find? Yeah, you know, so uh, with the commercial cow uh, programs, you're looking at probably two to three weeks getting your samples back, depending on the time of the year. If, if we're taking them in spring and fall when most people take them, obviously those labs probably run a little bit slower. Um, the purebred sector, we will actually turn those into our breed associations respectively, uh, and those labs, they vary quite often. Sometimes it's a month, sometimes it may be two to three months, depending on the lab quantity. All right, well, I think this is a, a great opportunity for producers to try this out, and hopefully this video will help make it easier for you to try that. So, thank you. So, uh, there's a couple of different places that we can take blood uh, for our DNA samples. You can take it at the rear of the tail where you would do a blood pregnancy test, or, or there's a couple of other places. You can either take it inside the ear, we would clean the ear and prick the vein on the inside of the ear, or we can take it off the back of the ear. And so there's two or three veins that we see back here. We're just gonna clean off the back of the ear so that we can better see the vein. It's not a requirement, but I do like doing it because it does help us keep our samples clean. Uh, it takes any dirt and debris out. And so now we've got a good clean spot to where we can actually see a vein poking out of the ear. Um, and so that's where we would insert a needle and then begin to collect blood under our blood cards. And I've simply just got a paper towel with some isopropyl alcohol. Uh, we're going to brush away any of the loose hair that we clipped off and then scrub it down really well one time uh, to get any debris out of there. 
try to prevent any type of infection whatsoever and then get the best clean sample that we can. All right, so we have the DNA blood cards here. And so what I'm going to do is on the animal ID, I'm going to write down, once again, XN64. And then I will correspond that same number over to the record sheet that we will turn in when we turn in the DNA test as well. So um, once again, I've written XN64. I'll uh, write um, and then the sample type and we'll fill out what all information they want from that DNA sample. So this is where an extra set of hands is nice, if at all possible, and so uh, having Whitney here today uh, will help. Uh, but we have a blood card, okay, and we're going to fold the top back and kind of crease it, and then I'll pull it back over until we're ready to use it. Uh, the main thing is, is the absorbent paper that we have here with a target on it. We don't want any dirt, debris, things of that nature on it. And so we'll keep that closed until we're ready. So I'll hand that to Whitney. And then on the back of our ear here, we'll see a vein sticking up. And there's two or three veins that we can find. And it won't take much blood. A couple of drops will more than suffice. So we both got clean uh, gloves on so that we're not contaminating the, the sample. And we're going to come over here and we're going to see the, see the vein. And I'm just going to prick the vein. And so I've got a drop of blood there. There we go. And so now she's bleeding. And we're going to take that and we're just going to dab it. And that's plenty. So now we have a card with ample supply of blood on it. And this thing is actually pretty cool. So it has two slots in the bottom of it. One of them is for drying, the other one is for sending it off to the lab. The one closest to the paper is the one for drying. And so it's going to leave an air space between the absorbent paper and the cover for that to dry. It keeps a little bit of dirt and debris off of it. It also keeps other blood from coming in contact with it. And if you look over here, at our table just kind of for demonstration purposes. So beside a lot of our shoots we have these old tables, okay, and they get pretty nasty. And so what we've done, just to demonstrate how dirty it actually was, we've actually cleaned this side with alcohol uh, prior to, and then that's where we're going to lay these samples until we get ready to go. There's not any dirt or debris here, so this is just a good management tool to clean everything prior to us taking the samples shows you the difference in what was and what is. And so whenever we get done taking all of our samples for the day, we'll take all those cards and then we'll take them back home, lay them on a shelf or on the kitchen table, something like that, let them dry for about 24 hours and then we'll mail them off to the, to the lab. Okay, so the second way that we can draw blood um, to put on our blood cards for DNA testing is just with a simple needle and syringe. We'll do that at the rear of the cow uh, we'll put her, her needle and her syringe into the vein and then we'll drop blood via the needle onto the target space until we su sufficiently fill the target. Um, cheap needle and syringe, I guess my preference would be an 18 gauge, something like that. Nothing, nothing bigger than that for sure. And then a couple of cc's. So if you've got a 3 cc syringe, something like that, that's more than adequate uh, for what we're doing. All right, so here we are, we're at the rear of the cow getting ready to take a sample for our blood test for DNA. Uh, and so much like a blood pregnancy test, we'll take it from the exact same spot. We're essentially just gonna elevate the tail. And here, we're just cleaning it once again uh, with just a paper towel and some isopropyl alcohol so that we don't contaminate anything. And so now that she's good and clean, We'll take our needle and syringe. We'll find the valley between the two spinal processes and then we'll insert the needle. Okay, and at a 90 degree angle, we'll start pulling blood. And as you can see, it comes out quite easily. And so, just for demonstration purposes, we have tons of blood there to use to fill our card. We only need about a cc or cc and a quarter. There's about three and a half in our syringe. And so we'll rub it, rub our site, make sure that it's not bleeding. We'll cap our needle and syringe to help keep it clean. And then we'll put our tail back down. Okay, so here we are. We have our, our blood card did again. 
Uh, Whitney's already filled out the information on the back and we can match that to our tag number so that we know that we've got the right sample for the right cow. And then we'll essentially take our needle with the open side down and just very gently we'll fill the card. And once our target is full, Whitney will close it into the drying position and then we'll put it over here on our clean spot of our table uh, so that, uh, that it can dry. Couple of things, we cannot reuse either of these. And so both of them are disposed at this time. We'll put them into our sharps container and we will not use them for another cow. Same thing with our gloves, we'll take those off and dispose of those too so that we don't contaminate those samples or get any, uh, any foreign blood matter on this particular cow's blood card. So here we are at the rear of the cow. Uh, we're gonna take a hair sample for DNA testing. Uh, and the switch is by far the easiest place to do this. And we're looking for anywhere between whatever the uh, test calls for, between 30 and 60 hair follicles. And so what that essentially says is we're not worried about this part of the hair, we're actually worried about the root that's underneath the skin. And that's where our DNA is con contained in those hair samples. And so I've got just a simple set of uh, needle nose tweezers that we've cleaned with alcohol uh, prior to us taking these samples. And so instead of pulling down the easiest way I've found is to kind of roll it and twist it around our needle nose pliers and then pull up. And as we can see, if we can zoom in, we have a lot of material on the end of those hair follicles. And so, so we have a lot of root material there uh, and that is a really good sample. And this to me is where it really is nice to have an extra set of hands because this gets a little bit cantankerous from time to time. So Whitney's gonna open up our blood card or our hair card rather, and in our hair card is a sticky side and, and, a, and a matted side. And so we're gonna take our hair and essentially kind of spread it along that matted, the matted side. And then we'll fold this back over to seal it. And this one here has a little bitty piece here. And so here we are, we've got it sealed now into the card. We're not concerned about this hair sticking out over here. Better yet, we don't want it sticking out for the simple fact that it might be grabbed upon something uh, and may pull our samples out. And so Whitney will take a, take a pair of scissors and trim it off right next to the cardboard. And we'll just discard this. And so any extra hair we'll trim off around the outside to keep a good clean sample. And there it is. Mm -hmm. And so We've got our numbers that correspond with our ear tags. We've got our DNA sample in the card. There it is. And we'll seal this up. We'll actually use, these only have one slot. And so we'll seal that and it's ready to be uh, taken to the lab. One of the newest ways and actually the most preferred method of taking a DNA sample uh, for any type of collection is what's called a TSU, it's a temp t tissue sampling unit, okay? And essentially what we have is we have an applicator gun um, that you can get, they're about 40 bucks, and then we have a, a, a set of vials that actually snap into our applicator gun. Each one of these will be taken for a separate cow. They have a corresponding number with our card here and that's where we'll um, fill out our cow information on the card that actually holds the TSU. And so to take a TSU, we take our vial and we're going to put it into the mouth of the gun. Okay. This particular gun has a, has a rotating locking collar. And so now that TSU is held securely. We will rotate the top of our gun down to the sampler, to the tissue sampler, and then it will pull out the actual cutting surface of the, of the vial. And so now our tissue sampler is ready to go. One thing that's really neat about these is if we were to be able to see up close, an unused vial has a green insert in it. After that vial has been used, it'll have a red insert in it. And so we'll know real quick if that keeps you from using a, uh, using a vial twice, misusing one that's already been used or one that's been discarded. So we'll be able to look, and on this one we see a green 
a green stopper in it so we know it's good and it's ready to be used. Okay, and so, so here we are cow side with our TSU. We've got our vial already in our gun. Whitney has denoted the ear tag number on our, uh, on our case here for our vial. She also has a corresponding paperwork already filled out over there on our table. And so essentially now all we've got to do is take a sample from the ear. Just a couple of things to think about. We want to stay about an inch away from the head of the cow and we want to stay about an inch away from the brim of the ear all the way around. And so we need somewhere in this middle section here, as you can see this cow has two tags and so it kind of shortens the amount of space that we have. But nonetheless, we'll take it and we have our cutting surface on the back of the ear and just like that we have it. And so now we can take our tissue sample out of our vial and if we look we can see the green stopper has gone to the bottom. Okay. The red stopper, we can see the red stopper and then we can also see the tissue that is in the vial. And so we've got a layer of skin, a layer of cartilage, and another layer of skin making something like an Oreo sandwich uh, within our vial. And so that right there is what we will put back in our box and it will go to the lab. We've taken our sample now and we have our gun here. The last part of this process is to remove the cutting edge of the previous TSU. Those will not ever be used on, on multiple occasions. And so these guns, we simply pull the, gun, pull the handles apart in this fashion. The TSU pops out. We put that in a sharps container to be disposed of properly and we will only use those on one particular animal and never two. Just for demonstration purposes, let's assume that we've got all of our samples taken for the day. The next thing to do is to once again double check to make sure that the corresponding numbers match the cows that we've utilized in our, in our sampling today. Then, if we're going to mail these samples off immediately or in the next six to eight months even, we will maintain these at room temperature. If we have taken these uh, in advance and we're going to hold on to them for maybe a year or longer, okay, we will put those into a deep freeze and we will not use a self defrosting deep freeze on these. We want an actual deep freeze that doesn't vary in temperature to maintain the quality of the tissue sample. And so if we're going to hold on to them for a year, they go into that deep freeze that is not self defrosting.